Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. The Veterans Affairs Clinic that was riddled with gunfire last December was damaged to the tune of $25,000. The median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market in March stayed steady, but was up 10% compared to March of 2023. Expect some windy conditions tomorrow with warmer temperatures on Wednesday and Thursday. Your full weather forecast is coming up. Officials say two men escaped Sunday night from a gasoline-fueled garage fire in East Wenatchee. The Wenatchee Valley Fire Department says the incident was reported at 7.22 p.m. in the 300 block of North Keller Avenue, where gasoline vapor set the garage ablaze after it contacted a propane heater. The occupants were able to move a parked vehicle out of the garage as it burned. Firefighters say the blaze was quickly extinguished, but not before it destroyed two motorcycles, several gas-powered tools, and miscellaneous recreational gear. Chelan County Commissioner Tiffany Gearing told NCW Life News today she will not run again to represent the county's 3rd District. Gearing, a Chelan Republican, was elected to the seat in 2020. One of the candidates she defeated for the open position announced this morning that he'll run for the post a second time. Brant Capel is a Wenatchee Republican and senior legislative assistant to 12th District State Representative Keith Gaynor. The 3rd County District runs from North Wenatchee to include Sunny Slope, Eniat, Chelan, and Manson. So far, Capel is the only person to file for the office with the Washington Public Disclosure Commission. The final week for candidates to register is May 5th through May 10th. Grace City Church in Wenatchee got its city permit this week to launch its private K-12 school called Garden City Academy. Hearing examiner Andy Kotkamp ruled on Thursday that the proposed school for up to 350 students meets the city's zoning and land use requirements. It will be operated at King's Orchard Church of Christ at 1610 Orchard Avenue. Kotkamp's permit approval comes with conditions. The evangelical church must install crosswalks at King Orchard to accommodate new foot traffic, may not have amplified outdoor music, and may not allow firearms on the property except in accordance with the law. In its course catalog for parents, Grace City Church promised it would place armed security at Garden City Academy once it's opened. The Veterans Affairs Clinic that was riddled with gunfire last December was damaged to the tune of $25,000. That's the amount calculated by insurers for the Elwood Bud Link VA Outpatient Center in Old Station, where a suspect is accused of shooting into the doors and windows of the building with a handgun and ramming it with his truck. The incident took place about 10.30 p.m. on December 17th while the building was unoccupied. Authorities say the gunman was a military veteran who was in mental health crisis at the time. Police shot and wounded the man several times after stopping his fleeing vehicle on Eastmont Avenue where he allegedly refused their commands to disarm. He faces a possible trial later this month. When we come back, a Wenatchee firefighter who completed a solo swim across Lake Chelan last September has nearly doubled his original $10,000 GoFundMe goal to help families facing a pediatric medical crisis. Former police chief and politician Lauren Culp is facing expulsion from the state organization that represents police leaders. And we will bring you some local video from today's solar eclipse. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, 
and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. So you may have heard the latest trend, shrinkflation. Companies are making products smaller and decreasing the quality of their ingredients. Well, at Abby's, we're going the opposite direction. We're sticking with the same plan that's worked since 1964. For a real value, head to Abby's. This is Skinny, and he helped found Abby's 60 years ago. In honor of Skinny, we're putting his favorite pizza on sale. Savory pizza sauce, Canadian bacon piled to the edge, and juicy tomatoes make this a very special pizza. Order your Skinny special right now at abbeys.com. Wenatchee firefighter Captain Brandon Coons, who completed a solo swim across Lake Chelan last September, has nearly doubled his original $10,000 GoFundMe goal to help families facing a pediatric, a pediatric medical crisis. Coons swam the 50-mile length of Lake uh, Chelan to raise money for the Greatest Needs Fund at Seattle Children's Hospital, which helps families in similar situations to his friends who lost their infant daughter Jacqueline Grace to a heart development issue shortly after birth. Coons's swim began September 15th and concluded four days later with $18,500 raised. Now Coons has raised $19,467, though he says he would have swam for the donation for a single dollar. Former police chief and politician Lauren Culp is facing expulsion from the state organization that represents police leaders. The Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs says Culp could be expelled from the group for derogatory comments on the social platform X, formerly Twitter, that targeted Republican legislators, including Representative Jacqueline Maycumber of the 7th District. Waspick says the public comments are unbecoming of a law enforcement member. The group board will meet April 29th to vote on whether to expel Culp. The former Republican police chief unsuccessfully ran for both Washington governor and for Congress against Dan Newhouse. Culp is not running for office this year and now serves as a chief deputy for the Klickitat County Sheriff. The median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market in March stayed steady, but was up 10% compared to March of 2023. Pacific Appraisal Associates of Wenatchee reports the median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market last month was $485,000. The price was $439,000 in March of last year. Total home sales and active sales listings were also down last month compared to 2023. Total sales in March March was at 51. That's a 15% drop compared to last year when there were 60 total home sales. Active listings last month were at 110. That's down 8% compared to March of 2023 when 119 homes were listed. The Wenatchee real estate market consists of Wenatchee, East Wenatchee, Malaga, Arondo, and Rock Island. Today's eclipse captivated watchers across the United States. Unlike the last eclipse in 2017, the Wenatchee Valley didn't lie in the path of totality. Even so, our producers caught a glimpse of the event and it reminded them of a certain popular movie. Coming up next, the Upper Wenatchee Pilot Project is a long-planned effort to improve 75,000 acres of forest land near Plain, making them healthier and more resilient to wildfire. We'll tell you more about an informational meeting coming up in tonight's feature story. A mixed bag of spring weather is upon us with wind tomorrow and warmer temperatures by the end of the week. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. You've got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, 
Remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. There's no place like home, because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories, and we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Culinary Apple is North Central Washington's premier kitchen store with everything you need to elevate your own culinary experience. A walk on Wooden Avenue wouldn't be complete without a stop at the Chelan Chamber of Commerce. There you'll find all the information you need about local businesses, events, and activities across the entire Chelan Valley. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. The Upper Wenatchee Pilot Project is a long-planned effort to improve 75,000 acres of forest land near Plain, making them healthier and more resilient to wildfire. It launches with an informational meeting coming up on April 25th. Mike Caputa is a Natural Resources Director for Chelan County and a key leader on the project. He recently talked about the county's forestry efforts and other work on the Chelan County Connection podcast. One of the big areas for us is looking at forest health and wildfire risk. So the county has a what's called a good neighbor authority agreement with the Forest Service. We're one of only five counties in the West who have that kind of agreement. And it gives us the ability and the authority to work on Forest Service property. Right? So Chelan County's what, like 85% uh, publicly owned, 80% Forest Service. Uh, they need more capacity right, to do more work. And so we're entering into several agreements with them to do forest health work. So we're going to be doing um, commercial thinning, um, uh, pre-commercial thinning, um, doing prescribed burning. Um, and so there's, the community is going to see a lot of activity um, and tree removal and thinning, you know, coming up, you know, really over the next five years in the Lake Wenatchee area but we'll be expanding our efforts um, across the whole county. So just, you know, in, in the long view, you know, the Chelan County and a bunch of the communities in Chelan County are some of the highest risk communities to wildfire. And so we're trying to do our part to advance uh, that forest health work. We have a busy summer, as I alluded to, we have 11 construction projects uh, going into the ground this year. And there's quite a variety. Um, one example we're uh, building a new pump station and delivery system for the Cascade Orchard Irrigation Company. That's an irrigation district that currently shares a surface water diversion on Icicle Creek with the Leavenworth National Fish Hatchery. So this is a big project that's part of the Icicle Work Group and the Icicle Strategy, which is a large group of stakeholders and tribes working on water resource issues and in-stream flows in Icicle Creek. So we're building a new pump station for them, just uh, issued notice to proceed to uh, Strider Construction. That's an almost $10 million construction project. And it's going to be going on for a while, you know, with the irrigation season being, you know, May through the end of September. You know, there's certain work that Strider can do before May. Um, once we get into July and August, we have some what we call fish work windows. There are only certain times of the year when you can go work in the water. And that's when we're going to be building um, the pump station. And then we'll be building um, a bunch of delivery pipelines um, in the fall and then of 24 and then the spring. 
Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic weekend, kind of a mixed bag over the weekend. Boy, when the sun went behind those clouds, it got kind of chilly with the breezy conditions, especially on Saturday. We had more of those clouds today as we look out our weather window from this afternoon up in Okanagan County. Here's Pateras right here and then Brewster up in the middle part of your screen and a lot of thick cloudiness up in the northern part of our viewing area and rain showers around Lake Wenatchee this afternoon. Tomorrow we got to deal with some wind. Low pressure and high pressure very tightly packed together and that's going to kick up those winds. 30 to 35 mile an hour gusts possible for a Moses Lake. 40 to 45 miles an hour in Ellensburg and a little bit better here in Wenatchee at 25 to 30 miles an hour. I think we'll see probably a gust of 25 with steady winds between about 10 and 20 miles an hour. So a little bit of everything in our spring weather. 57 are unofficial high today, and that's just a couple of degrees below where we should be at 59 for this time of year. Our record, our first 80 degree record, 81 set back in 2016. 37 this morning, once again, pretty much in line with a normal low of 39 degrees. 28 our record low, and that was set in 1973. Sunrise 624 this morning, and it sets for us tonight at 741. All right, let's take a look at what we could expect temperature wise as we get you into Tuesday and it's going to warm up out there mid 60s into the Columbia Basin for Afreda and Moses Lake 63 for Quincy and then a few degrees cooler back to the west Ellensburg 59 uh, Wenatchee 60 also any at 58 the high temperature tomorrow for you folks in Leavenworth all right tonight we do see an area of high pressure trying to push on shore uh, around central California or so it's giving us a very zonal flow into Washington State state and we'll still see some scattered showers tonight mainly western Chelan County maybe some sprinkles in the city with lows about 40 degrees for Tuesday oh yeah windy conditions tomorrow right here in north central Washington going to be partly cloudy sky conditions anyway with high temperatures warming up slowly to around 60 degrees tomorrow for Wednesday a lot better mostly sunny skies much less wind just see some high clouds around during the afternoon with Wednesday Wednesday's high temperatures into those low 60s. For Thursday, we're going to continue that warm up. We'll see mostly cloudy skies, but we will be a little bit warmer with highs in the mid 60s. Notice an area of low pressure just off the coast and an associated frontal boundary that will continue to move through the state as we get into the end of the week. Once again, though, temperatures slightly above normal. For Friday, partly cloudy skies. Not a bad way to end our work week. Mild temperatures with highs mainly into the low and mid 60s. Once again, an area of low pressure now is sinking to the south with another ridge set to move into the Pacific Northwest. And then as we kick off our weekend on Saturday, mostly sunny skies. We are going to warm up high temperatures in the mid to upper 60s for Saturday. Could be lots of 70s on the map Saturday afternoon as well. And then boy, look at the wind that we expect on Sunday. Low pressure to our east, a big area of high pressure moving in. Going to tighten up those pressure gradient. So we're going to see a lot of wind Sunday with high temperatures just falling back into the low 60s. All right, your seven day forecast now 43 overnight tonight, partly cloudy and breezy, almost windy for a lot of places, 60 degrees tomorrow. And then that slow warm up Wednesday into Thursday from mostly sunny to mostly cloudy skies on Thursday and 64. And then for Friday, partly cloudy with a high temperature of 63. Kicking off our weekend, it looks nice for Saturday. Saturday, mostly sunny and warmer in 67 and then a lot of wind on Sunday with partly cloudy skies. High temperature by the end of our weekend around 63 degrees. And that's a look at your north central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight. Sports report with Eric Grantstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. The Honda you want is here. Drive in the moment with the rugged and capable Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Find your adventure with great offers now available on the Honda you want. All from the 2023 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today.
And a happy Monday to you. The run for Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's basketball team came up short in the national championship Sunday, falling to South Carolina 87 to 75. The Gamecocks out rebounded the other team 51 to 29 for the game and took control of the contest in the second quarter. Clark finished with a game high 30 points in her final game in an Iowa uniform. South Carolina is just so good. Like there's only so much you can do. I mean, Cardoso has 17 rebounds. They have 51 as a team. We have 29. Like hard to win a basketball game like that. You basically got to shoot perfect at that point. And um, you know, I'm just proud of our group. We, you know, we never backed down. And um, you know, we gave it everything we got. I think for me, is just the emotions will probably hit me over the next couple of days. And I don't have much time to, you know sit around and sulk and be upset and I don't think that's what I'm about either is you know yeah I'm sad we lost this game but I'm also so proud of myself I'm so proud of my teammates I'm so proud of this program um, there's a lot to be proud of but you know there's going to be tears it is sad that this is all over and this is the last time I'm going to put on an Iowa jersey so um, I think just reflecting back and you know soaking in everything that I was able to do because basically anybody other than me and coach Bluter never thought this was possible. South Carolina coach Don Staley won her third national championship with a victory. She was quick to recognize Caitlin Clark for her post-game press conference. I want to just say congratulations to, to Iowa and Caitlin for um, making it back to the national championship game. Um, obviously, they are a formidable opponent um, that took everything that we had to, to win the basketball game, but just don't want to um, um, not utilize this opportunity to thank Caitlin for what she's done for women's basketball. Like her, her shoulders were heavy and getting a lot of eyeballs on our game. And sometimes as a young person, it could be, it could be a bit much, but I thought she handled it with class. Um, and I hope that every step of the ladder of success that she goes, um, she's able to elevate whatever room she's in. Freshman Tessa Johnson came off the bench to lead four players in double figures with 19 points. Purdue continued its magical run in the men's tournament with a 63-50 win over NC State Saturday in the Final Four. They'll meet UConn tonight in the national championship after the Huskies beat Alabama 86-72, tip time 620. That'll be on TBS. Well, the Mariners uh, continued to struggle to start the season after losing two of three in Milwaukee over the weekend, including a 12-4 decision. Sunday. Things started well enough for Seattle with Josh Rojas driving in a run in the top of the first. Dom Canzone finished the game with a two-run home run. Unfortunately, Emerson Hancock was bashed around for eight runs in the middle as the Brewers came up with the big win. Into right field for a base hit. Julio's being waved home. Polanco a wide turn at first. He'll settle there. Three batters into the ball game. The Mariners strike first. And zone annihilates this ball. How far to the back of the second deck? Dom Canzone leans into his second of the season. Obliterated. Seattle moves on to Toronto today to face the uh, Blue Jays. That game on Root Sports Northwest. The Wenatchee Wild kept their playoff hopes alive with a heavy cost Friday night at the Town Toyota Center. Wenatchee jumped out to a 2-0 lead on two goals from Kenta Isogai. It was his second goal, however, that uh, he was injured on a bad play that would cause him to miss game six on Sunday. Austin Drade had the call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Wood sends it ahead looking for Isogai. Catches him on his back skate. Back for Wood looking for a shot. Poked off his stick. Isogai top corner. He scores! And some contact after the goal. And this is busted loose. Shelter got knocked down. Sword getting in. Whiteman jumped Sword from behind. Isogai is knocked down in front of the net. The series then shifted to Kelowna for Game 6 Sunday without Isogai in the lineup. Wodanchi would fall 4-2. Regan Martell, make that uh, Bartell, had the call on the Rockets Hockey Network. The other way, here comes Crystal back inside the zone on right wing to the middle. The trailer, Caden, Sandra Kang for Crystal. Let's go! A little bang, a little bang, a little boom. Andrew Crystal! 
Presto. T-check chance, side, score! Too much, too much power, too much rocket, and it's T.J. Ginla tying a franchise record. Just in a game of this magnitude, here's Fraser, right wing enters the zone, centering the shot, they score! McCaggerty! Left side center, Crystal, and he'll shell it back towards the Wenatchee. Blue line, one here by the Rockets, they score! It's Crystal the steal! Actually, a Ginla the steal, and Crystal the finish! That's blocked, Rockets, Crystal to center. Next grab, cook a chance! Score! Back for Sward, he'll fire, deflected, it's the side, they score! It's freezing, he gets it home. The game has ended, the series has concluded. How do you like those apples? Rockets advance to the conference semifinals by taking the series four games to two. Take a look at the prep scoreboard from the weekend. Thanks to Les Schwab. First of all, in baseball, Moses Lake and Acemont split a twin bill on Friday with the Mavericks taking game 1-5-3. The Bodie Yale threw a no-hitter in the nightcap for the Wildcats. They won that one 2-0. Wenatchee swept a twin bill from Sunnyside, winning 5-4 and 14-4. Meridian won a single game against Cashmere, 10-7. On Saturday, Othello swept a doubleheader from a Freda. Three zip and one zip. Quincy swept Royal 8 2 and 5 1. Chalange uh, took uh, two from Okanagan 9 2 and 3 2. Columbia Burbank thumped Cascade 15 5 and 22 5. Brewster squeaked by Tenasket 5 4 and 9 5. Goldendale shut out Lake Roosevelt 17 0. Raiders also fell to Warden by a final of 11 to 8. In prep fast pitch softball Friday, Mount Baker beat Cashmere 23 3. Moses Lake swept a close double header from Mount Sy 5 3 and 5 four. Wenatchee and Eastmont both put up nine goals in big nine soccer victories on Friday. Panthers beat Moses Lake 9-1 while the Wildcats top West Valley 9-2. Saturday saw Manson shut out Cashmere 1-0. Cascade cut down Elma 5-1. Bridgeport topped Omac 4-1. We'll be out at Wildcat Stadium Friday for the rematch between Eastmont and Wenatchee. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen will have the call with our pregame beginning at 6.50 here on the NCW Life Channel. That's a look at sports news. Have a happy Monday. On the next edition of my program, Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, Pat Quinn Williams from Walk MS. Wenatchee, I just wrote a song for you. Thank That's you. That's pretty good, isn't it? Walk MS is back. It is going to be, uh, for the Wenatchee edition anyway, on Saturday, May 18th. We'll talk about everything you need to know to get ready to hike around the Loop Trail here at Walla Walla Point Park and raise money for a good cause. Pat Quinn Williams, my good friend, on the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.